But those are just constructs. Those are things that we humans made up. So when you realize that and are aware of that, it can make you see that you can pursue anything at any point in your life. After leaving the corporate nine to five grind, I became the boss of my own spiritual business, helping others explore and navigate the human experience from insight, wisdom, and lessons learned along the way. Today, I help aspiring spiritual entrepreneurs gain the confidence to share their gifts with the world. Welcome to the Happy Healing Shop Podcast. I'm your host, Trang Pham Nguyen, and each week we'll dive into incredible stories of strength, resilience, and transformation. So if you are ready for some serious breakthroughs, laughs and tears, and stories that will inspire you, you are in the right place, my friend. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the show. I cannot believe it has been one year already since I started podcasting. I feel like time flies really quick the older you get. And so today I want to talk about my reflections and what I've learned after one year of podcasting and doing about 60 episodes. That's a lot of recording and that's a lot of time in front of the camera and on the mic. If you're new to my show, welcome. If you have been here with me for a long time, thank you so much for supporting me. So I'm gonna share with you today five main takeaways that I've learned from one year of podcasting. So on the show, you'll see that there's a few episodes that range from how to start your own spiritual business on grief and then also things that are going on in my life tools and tips that I've learned from other healers or my therapy sessions. And my favorite is interviewing people, interviewing guests and their stories. So that brings me to point number one, that there is a power in sharing your vulnerable stories. So the thing is when I source out guests or interview guests, we kind of usually go over, whether through text, audio messages, or email, or even a pre-interview about what we wanna go over, what someone feels comfortable, um, questions that people feel comfortable enough. And usually I have a list of questions I like to ask and they come to me really quickly just because I'm a very curious person. And usually I'll run it over with them to see if they feel okay answering those questions to collect their thoughts if they need to. And also this show is edited. Trust me, it's good that it's edited because you would see so many bloopers, so many silent moments where I have a lot of brain farts. And I feel like doing a podcast show like this, I am in a way a director where sometimes when you have a guest on, you wanna steer the conversation in certain ways. However, you have to be able to go with the flow at a certain point. And that has served me well in the fact that that I'm able to pull out great interviews from people. And also there is a tactfulness and delicateness, is that a word, to being able to ask questions to people in a way that they feel okay answering. And a lot of the stories that people share, they are very vulnerable to them, right? When we are listening into someone's story, you're just like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe that's amazing that happened or I cannot believe that person went through that. But to the person being interviewed, it feels 10,000 times heavier to share sometimes what they feel is like a secret in their life. Or sometimes there's a fear of having judgment from family and friends for what they say or getting backlash. However, in my opinion, those are the stories that need to be shared the most. And that's why I truly think so many people suffer in silence and pain because when we don't share our stories, it's interesting because let's take the example of divorce. We know a lot of people go through it, but yet so many people feel lonely in the process when they go through divorce. But when we talk more about it, people realize they're not alone and they realize that they are feeling the same exact feelings as that person that's going through it and that they're not insane and that it's very normal to feel the way they do. Now, for other people that aren't going through a divorce, what I like is that it gives a very eye-opening experience on what the real emotions that go behind it, what mental space and mental load that it takes for someone going through such a huge transition in their life. And this doesn't have to be with divorce. It can be with anything that makes you feel uprooted in life. There were a couple episodes where I talked about grief and my personal experience with grief. So with my mom, my aunt, my uncle dying, and my job loss, being asked to move out of a home. So having the loss of a home, having issues with my health. And I remember 
when I was drafting what I want to say for these grief episodes, I wasn't too scared about getting backlash or anything like that. I actually thought that no one would respond or no one would think anything of episodes. But in fact, in those very vulnerable um, episodes, that's where I got quite a few emails, comments, messages, very, very kind messages, and people thanking me that I shared my grief and my experience with it because they went through the same thing or something very similar, yet they felt so alone. So sharing your stories, whatever they may be, can break that silence and open the doors and possibilities for healing. What I found interesting is obviously after we record an episode with a guest, we'll chit chat afterwards sometimes, or maybe they'll message me later on. And interestingly for some of the guests, telling their story brought them a sense of relief and closure or a sense of a chapter ending or a sense of closing that chapter in their life. Okay, point number two, there's a value in talking to everyday voices. And what I mean by that is on my show, you'll notice on at least my first and second season, you'll see that I don't have these major celebrities or these people with huge, huge followings. And honestly, most of them are not trained speakers. They're not used to being in front of a camera, but that is also what makes it relatable for a lot of people listening. It's relatable that an everyday person is struggling as a human in the world that we created today. Someone that is like you, someone that is like me. Now, a challenge I face with that is a lot of people uh, don't share my podcast, even the episodes they're on with their followers or even their friends and family sometimes. And it can be frustrating because that's what helps this podcast grow, especially as this is a smaller podcast right now. And I know that these stories are amazing, but there's only so much I can do. My most listened to episode is actually episode 19, where I talked to Christina Zodi, who went through drug addiction, turned her life around and created her own business. Now she was afraid of getting judged from clients, knowing her background story, but in fact, the opposite happened. A lot of people, when she shared her story and people started listening to it, people reached out to her and messaged her telling how inspiring it was to see that she was in such a low and dark place and was able to turn her life around on her own. Does she have a huge following on social media? No. However, that's a perfect example of her sharing it with her network and people start listening to it. They're curious, people wanna learn. Speaking of sharing, if you have five seconds a day, please give a follow and share this podcast with a friend who would be interested in this type of stuff. It really does help grow. Now, as I'm listening to these stories, I have learned to have more compassion for people because when you hear the details of how things unfolded for them, you start to learn that life is not black and white. It is very gray and that some people make decisions that maybe weren't the best, but they also didn't know any better. Or unfortunately, they didn't have the support or finances to help them get through something. I also share more of the life lessons I learned in episode 25, where it's 35 lessons I learned as I turned 35 years old. Check it out, it's one of my favorite episodes. Now, key point number three that I learned from podcasting is the importance of self-confidence. What a game changer if our parents had all raised us to be confident in who we are and that we are capable of anything. So my guests, Susie and Angela, which you can find on episode seven and episode 23, you can tell that they grew up with such a different level of confidence in being able to achieve what they want to do. And when you listen to those episodes, you'll hear that a lot of it had to do with what they were told growing up from their parents or their guardians. And unfortunately, what I see in clients and many people is the lack of self-confidence is why it takes 10 times longer to reach our goals. Most of the time, it's all in the mind. And once we get past those fears that hold us back from reaching fulfillment, from reaching what we want out of life, then that's when things start to change. Not only is it self-confidence, but also exposure. So Angela, one of my guests, she grew up in an entrepreneurial background. Um, in an entrepreneurial family. So her starting a business came a lot easier for her than someone that grows up in a house where stability was the only lecture that you got. Get a job that's stable, 
go for things that are stable. And you see the difference in how she's more okay with the concept of failure and the concept of starting out over or pivoting or figuring things out. There's not as much resistance to it. Key point number four, everyone has a story. That person sitting three desks down from you, your coworker, that person that's at the grocery store, they probably have a story but no one asks about it and it's easy to overlook them. And it's funny because a lot of times when I do get guests, it's because we've had a chit chat before or a coffee or something or met through friends and it just kind of comes up in conversation. I think it's just something I bring up naturally of what's your life story without asking it like that, but kind of asking in a way where you can kind of listen in and see whether or not they have something there or if they're willing to share it. You know when you talk to your friends past 11 p.m. and it's deep talk? Sometimes that's when it happens, and I think in my head, this needs to be shared. This needs to be on a podcast. And when you come from a place of true curiosity, people can tell, and asking people about their stories can uncover so many incredible insights and experiences. And the fifth key takeaway from one year of podcasting is that it's never too late to change. Whether people think, I'm too old, I don't look good enough. There's so many excuses to make for ourselves. And there's clients that have said that to me, which makes me sad because we need more representation to see people sharing their stories and their experiences and they look different. They have wrinkles, they have um, different body shapes and sizes. And sometimes people say, oh, I'm too old for this. And it makes me sad because I think people don't realize that they're able to bring a different sense or lens of wisdom into what they have to share because they've lived through so much of life. Now, speaking of change, sometimes we go through life transitions that are so difficult, that make us start all over again. And that sounds terrifying, or it sounds also very exhausting. People are capable of changing. People are capable of making it to the other side. Now, is it easy? Hell no. But if you're going through a deep life transition, it's usually painful. Like divorce, job loss, loss of your health, moving, death. And with huge events like that, it makes you question deep down your values, your morals. It makes you reevaluate a lot of things. What you were taught, you go through a lot of self-analysis, self-reflection, maybe what part you had in it and realize what mistake you won't make again and what you'll look for next time to have a better version of a job, career path, relationship, marriage, etc. You can also say that the universe sometimes kicks you off the path because they're saying, "Um, excuse me, this is not working and you've been doing the same thing over and over again. So you've hit the limit. So it's gonna be unbearable for you now in order for you to make a change. And it's so hard because going into a new chapter of your life or a new transition in your life is one of the most painful things you can go through. But yet, when you look back five years later, you kind of sometimes don't recognize that version of you or you kind of cringe at it because you look back and you say, wow, I was such a different person. What I wanted in life, what my mindset was, was such a different version of me. Now, a lot of times when it comes to change in our lives, We're resistant to it because um, it isn't easy. It comes from a lot of doing the same thing. A lot of same old patterns, routines, habits. And also a lot of it is the scripts in our heads that we tell ourselves. Now the scripts we tell in our heads, however, are influenced by family, society, culture, our environment. So that makes it a little bit more complex. And so we sometimes have a pressure to get certain things achieved by a certain age, a certain time. But those are just constructs. Those are things that we humans made up. So when you realize that and are aware of that, it can make you see that you can pursue anything at any point in your life. And that success and happiness and fulfillment can be determined and defined by you. Thank you for listening in. I hope you enjoyed these reflections and overall insights I've had. 
for after doing one year of podcasting. If you're looking for an amazing spiritual community to join in on, I have the Happy Healing Club, which is my monthly membership where we have meditations, tapping, breath work, Reiki, and our shadow work self-healing journal so you can do the inner work and heal and transform in a supportive and understanding community. Everyone has been so kind and lovely. I feel very lucky and blessed that the universe has brought such great people into my life, into my community. Because sometimes when you create community, you have to be careful with how it's managed and what type of culture you want it to have. So check out thehappyhealingshop.com slash club for more information. And we also offer online classes and free resources at thehappyhealingshop.com. Thank you so much for being here with me as I celebrate my one year anniversary with podcasting here at The Happy Healing Shop. And as always, don't forget to shine your light brightly and to share your story because you never know who it can help give hope to, or inspire to create a change in their own world. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.